Just to note like how amazing it is that we have all these different players from every single aspect of like New York State. We have SPD coming from Staten Island. We have Pong coming from Long Island. Extra O coming from Brooklyn. And um, Dre Charles from coming from the Bronx. Like just amazing representation. What did I just, like, what the hell was that? That was canoeing. Welcome to the canoe. So this isn't a button check. No, no, no that is very no, much. That's, that's neutral. That's very much uh, PSG patented tech. Got it. Um, Frozen, take notes, LOL. <laughs> hey, listen, this is, how, this is how things are going to start. Now, both of these guys are very proficient in Fox, um, mm -hmm. but Hong, he doesn't believe in Fox to the degree that SBT does. Yeah. So I'm very curious to see what SBT is able to do to dissuade Pong from the confidence that has brought him all the way back to the run back. Yeah. Also take in mind that SP has got a ton of experience in this particular matchup because of Frozen. Yeah. And of course Frozen is the, I think he's still PGO. Uh, for now. <laughs> yeah, for now Palutena to play with him in Staten Island. Definitely some of the finest that he has to offer. Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure about Pong's intentions on that. I think it was a bait. Oh I want to say God. it was a bait. Either that, or he wasn't confident about getting the uh, the ledge cancel mm -hmm. on the uh, the very edge of stadium to go in more offensively, which I like that. He kept his options open. Wow, and I love that Pong went for an up smash. That just covered so many different options that SPT could have thrown at that moment. <laughs> SPT positioned himself perfectly to punish that teleport cancel, but unfortunately his execution was off just a little bit. But next time, Pong is definitely not going to get away with something like that. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't count the boy out just yet. Nice chain, gives him control of the ledge, lifts the down tilt, but there's really not a lot SPT can do in disadvantage like this. Like, he's just got to get his boots back on the ground and see if he can just contest landing another way. Because right now, Hong is not giving up any room. And this is, oh my god, went for the forwarder. That's really interesting. Perhaps he was thinking of a drag down. Oh, this not entirely sure about the mechanics of the Florida, but Pong sitting at a very convincing 3 to 1 stock lead right now. Definitely really different from the round one that we've described. Yeah, no, like, it really goes, like, something has to be said about the fact that this man is like 11 and 1 if you look at the bracket. He's anywhere between 10 and 1 or 12 and 1, and that one was SBT. SBT in his own right has had an amazing run up to this point. Yep. Like, <sighs> he's just so much involved with it, but. Um, right now, Pong is holding onto the stock so well. Man, like, SBT should have just, like, held it at that point and dropped the multi-jab. Like, at this level play, I don't think Pong would have run into that multi-jab on his shield like that. He yeah. could have gotten punished for it a lot worse. Pong could have actually just done an F-Smash. Um, and that is going to be the back of... I mean, Fox, such a light character, can die so early, 106%. Yeah, no, this is a fatal run for SBT at this point. He knows that every hit matters, and it's do or die. Yeah. So I like that he's going to go for less committal options. The up throw to start a juggle. Very risky, but fairly, like, as far as the damage is concerned, he knows he'll get the numbers on board, and Pong's not going to be fast enough to chase him, especially and if he peels. His positioning on ledge was just really perfect. He was, like, definitely expecting Pong to come up aggressively, and his up tilt put him out of range for the get-up attack, put him in range for the roll, but able to up smash, and now suddenly the stock count is even. <laughs> throwing out a little taunt as well just to give himself the moral boost. I mean, you gotta put respect on the man. Oh, I think he missed the dash grab. I believe that it's the back air that's supposed to convert to dash grab. Oh, and there was such a good firebox to the ledge. We saw how well SBT was able to delay himself, but the final hit of Nair actually picks him off and gives game one to Pong. Mm -hmm. um, so SBT was definitely adapting towards the end. He can play so, so clutch. He just holds on to his hockey. He's just able to change his game plan out of whim. And I feel like game two, we're gonna definitely see it maybe go a lot closer to the last stock, last hit then. Um, something like than this game. You know, Mort Morty, SBT, he's one of, I feel like he's one of New York's finest analytical minds, even mm -hmm. though he doesn't show it often. He doesn't commentate often. Yep. Um, you don't see him spout his knowledge on Twitter or whatnot, but he's very smart, and he surrounds himself a lot of, around a lot of different styles of play. So I would not be surprised to see him adapt to Pong, but at the same time, I feel like because the end of that game got so screwy so fast, yeah. I don't know if he'll be able to adapt to a specific style of play just because Pong sort of let loose towards the end of that, and he had such a confident control towards the beginning of that game. And so he takes us back to Stadium, see how well things can change. I feel like the stage really didn't have that big of an impact, so it's not the worst decisions. Yeah. Um, and right now, he has to, like, I mean, like, 
might. I was about to say, just don't get hit by Palutena <laughs> now. It's so hard. You're asking a lot, little buddy. Yeah. That's a big nair. I think Pong is just getting so much mileage out of it. And honestly, a kick dude like Fox, not much that you can do. I love right now like what SVT is doing with his patience, but right now Pong is still holding lead. And the way that he is using these uppies to get back, using the hitbox. Yeah. Beautiful tech chase. Ah, unable to punish it. Maybe he was expecting not so strong of a drift. Noticing that he wasn't been uh, he hasn't been able to get the down tilt pick off on SBT, just taking advantage of that Mondo large hitbox from Up Smash. A great call from Pong. Yep. And we're right back in the mix. He tried to get one of those last hits in there to extend the play, but a little bit greedy on his half. And it was a really good explosive flame from Pong. And normally you'll see that from any character through the projectile. They just like throw it out Whoa. just to interrupt you, stop your momentum, maybe stop you from setting up at ledge. And like that is something SVD has to be just aware of at all times. Now Pong had the lead, but I'm really surprised that I was able to trade with the neutral air. I was really playing like a man who's got nothing left to lose. Wow. Like he's going for like ignorant options on SBT. Both of them oh. are just dancing around each other's hitboxes because they know the first person to initiate something is going to be dealing so much percent. Right. They're trying to stay very proactive in like who's responding to what, where the battle's taking place, but both of them don't want to fully commit to the approach because they know that both Fox and Palutena have great reactionary games. Yeah. Like in reality, they don't have the best of approach options, but someone has to move the game state forward. Yep. So, and SBT is fairly limited in those options as far as both from the air and from the ground. But and he knows that Palutena can get plenty once she jumps. And what I really, really appreciate from SBT right now is the way he is mixing up with his jabs. You see him jab twice on Pong Shield, and Pong is preemptively rolling back, anticipating the multi-jab, and is ready to punish it. But then you just see SBT retreat after those two jabs. So, like, they're really playing around each other beautifully in that regard. I love the recovery mix-up. Wow, falling nearly to down tilt. And now... Pong has to land. This is one of Fox's strongest suits. Oh, I thought we were seeing the tomahawk grab. I thought it was time. All right. Oh. SPT keeping that in the pocket, I think, is going to be really useful later that on. That two action made me so nervous, and I don't know how to feel about any of this. Although their shields are shrinking from the increasing pressure, but... Ugh. And I love that SPT retreated back. He was anticipating uh, Pong to go for a high recovery, and that's the up smash. Now SPT is sitting at a lead. Granny is at 122%, so it's not all that considerable. The F are off the stage to get a little bit of stage control. Oh, he manages to get the pick and gets the kill follow-up. Council forward air managing it, and now a little bit of canoeing showing off, but hey. He's going to oh. get up in the All right, after the 10 hits, gets his down air. See how that starts up anything. Solid 27%. This is like the third time that this has happened to SBT. SBT th was trying to lead a, a fade back after the neutral air, hence why he did an F-tilt. But um, Pong was just going to go full committal. Great oh retreat from SBT, knowing exactly how long he's got to wait for that. Nair goes in for the elite dash attack. Doesn't really get him much, but he's still in control. His dash chances that just have so much intentionality behind it. He has like such like a strict, like logical, like uh, I guess like flow chugged in his head of what he is looking for, and he is ready to react at it. So he has a clear idea of the blast. No, like, the game. That's oh, for Pong. Pong gets his run back and secures him. His way into playing against Trey Charles in Losers Finals. Losers Finals. I am so. I am a little conflicted. bit devastated. 